Hello YouTube, my name is Brent. Today I want to teach you how to sew anything that you may need onto your uniform using a standard sewing machine, whether it be nape tapes, rank, or skill identification badges. I'm going to show you how to prep your uniform and get everything on there a lot cheaper than an alteration shop will do. Alright, first thing, I'm going to have a beer, alright, because I need to make sure that the line stays straight whenever I'm sewing it on there, and this is going to help do it. From Marsbrau, my favorite beer, uh, favorite brewery here in Germany, all right, from Bamberg. Okay, let's okay, do it. Okay, to start off, I just want to uh, clarify that uh, I'm going to have an assumption that you already know how to somewhat to generally operate a sewing machine. Um, if you have no idea how to thread, the sewing machine or you know spin a bobbin or anything like that um, please just go ahead and YouTube it uh, do some practice runs on some extra fabric uh, that you have around the house and uh, that'll make this experience a whole lot easier once you have the ability to thread everything uh, get the bobbin uh, spun and placed and you're able to get straight lines on a piece of fabric that's uh, just kind of junk and laying around the house that'll make this process a whole lot easier so self-teach yourself just a little bit, and with the most basic knowledge of using one of these machines, you'll easily be able to put everything on your uniform. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the Velcro name tapes. All right, and there's a couple ways that you can do this. One, there's a special sewing tool that is specifically designed to go ahead and rip off seams. But one of the ways that I find a lot easier, especially when it comes to the... Uh, the Velcro rank is using a paring knife, all right? They're extremely sharp, and once you run the sharp knife between the fabric and the Velcro itself, it's a million times easier to get those six seams off at the same time versus uh, doing one seam at a time using that special tool, all right? Like, like you can see, it's just kind of ripping through. Uh, you have to be very careful to not... Uh, ruin the fabric underneath, all right? You're not trying to create holes in that, but you have to be kind of aggressive uh, and flat to get it done correctly, all right? Um, try, try to use a little bit better knife safety than myself because I'm sort of an irresponsible person when it comes to that, but Still get the job done. All right. So now that we have it completely cut off, we have a nice template to size up our rank. Okay. We're going to go ahead and fold the rank to the same exact size as this, centering the rank as best as possible. And also, it has a nice good outline of where uh, we need to end up sewing it on later. Okay. We'll go ahead and do the same to both of these, and then we'll start prepping our rank. Okay, like I said before, we're going to go ahead and have to size up the old Velcro rank to the new sew-on rank that we plan on putting on. All right, we're going to have to fold it up to the exact same size as the rank previous, as the Velcro. Trying to keep the rank as center as possible so it doesn't look all crazy on the uniform. And trying to keep everything as parallel as possible on the top and bottom. First, sizing it up. Okay, bottom's a bit larger than the top, so we're gonna go ahead and free up some space on the top. Okay. So now that it's generally the same size as the old Velcro rank, we're going to go ahead and sew these two lines on the top and the bottom, keeping them straight. Okay, this is what I call uh, pre-sewing, and it's just going to make it a lot easier to put it on the uniform once we're done. Okay, so moving the sewing machine into view a little bit better. All right, as you can see, I go ahead and drop down the foot 
All right, pretty well lined up right now. I want to make sure that I'm on a good setting. And I'm going to put it on two for this because I don't want anything crazy going on. And I'll start about a half inch off the edge, right? We don't want to go all the way to the two edges because we're going to end up folding them in anyways. So just start about a half an inch and then finish about a half an inch on the other side uh, just to keep this crease that we created in there. Okay, go ahead and bring your needle all the way up so that way it's easier to unthread. And then your sewing machine should have some sort of cutting device on the other side. All right. Before we go ahead and do this bottom part again, we're just going to resize it to make sure that we do have that perfect size. Okay, and drop that off. Okay, it still looks pretty good. Go ahead and put this back in here. Hold on to the upper and lower threads. So that way they don't come loose. Start it off again, half inch off the edge. And then go ahead and okay. finish with the needle all the way in the up position so that way the needle or the thread can run freely. And go ahead and cut it off. Alright. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the sides. Okay. For this I like to place it on top somewhat centered. So that way I know exactly where the seam has to be for the sides. Okay. Now that I have those two, what you're also going to want to do is make sure that the excess is folded completely underneath. Okay. Like you can see, there's a lot of excess over on the top there. Just kind of curl it back underneath there. Okay. I'll go ahead and place this into the machine. Okay, now you're not going to do the half inch rule. You're going to go all the way up to where the uh, seam is from the top. You just kind of meet it right there at the corner. Okay, I can even move this over a little bit more. It doesn't look so square, so I'm going to fix it just a little bit. Okay, like I said, you're going all the way up to the seam on this one. Okay. You're gonna go seam to seam, all right? Don't run all the way through, you don't have to. Uh, just seam to seam, all right? Okay, now we have a nice edge on that side. Just to make sure that it's still the perfect size, we'll continue to size it with the, the old Velcro that we have. That this is perfectly squared up. Okay, and now is where you can kind of take a look and just make sure it's even on all sides, right? You don't want it being too far off, but I mean, if you have a little, a little bit of leeway. sure it doesn't look absolutely crazy okay like I said you're going seam to seam on the two sides okay. all right you're gonna have a lot of excess um, uh, thread if you want to you can go ahead and cut it off now but you're also gonna have to recut everything after you put it on the uniform so it's user's preference me I like to clean it up just a little bit so that way it's not as crazy by the time I uh, finally have to finish uh, putting the rank on but like I said it's completely up to you live your own life however you want to unless you're in the military then uh, do it according to the army standards or marine navy coast guard whatever well not the coast guard but Whichever one governs you. Right. 
All right, that's good enough for now. Okay. We have a. We now have a pre-sewed uh, rank that can easily be placed onto the uniform. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so with your uniform, with your uniform, you're going to have noticed that the uh, cutting of the Velcro rank off will have created some separation in your um, in your zipper. So if what you should do is first off just run uh, run your sewing machine uh, with this up. Just along the seam here, okay, right where you cut, right where you cut the uh, the Velcro rank off, just to ensure that this holds. All right, I only like to do one on the far end, just to ensure that there's uh, it doesn't lose its its um, its strength. Typically, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to sew on that uh, final rank once once you have this on here. As a matter of fact, okay. So, like I said, just run it quickly down to And just to, to make sure that the zipper doesn't lose any instru or structural integrity. Right, and cut your excess off. Okay, now the zipper's reaffixed. It doesn't have that double stitching, but at least we have you know something holding on there. All right, and this is important to uh, to keep only one stitch on there. So that way you can get the rank sewn as much as possible on the inside, all right? So now, what we're gonna do is position the rank where we need it, okay? Roughly right about there. One of the easiest ways I find to do it is I like to do the, uh, the edge first, because that's just gonna make everything a lot easier whenever you finally uh, sew the other sides. Uh, you don't want to sew the other sides and then realize that, oh crap, my, my edge looks stupid. So I like to do this edge first, just to make sure that we're not doing anything crazy. All right, and basically what you're going to do is you're just going to follow the same seam that you made earlier, making sure that the rank is lined up perfectly uh, parallel with this edge. you have that done you're able to move on to getting everything else what I like to do from this point all right is flip the zipper as far under as possible and then run the top and bottom all the way up to that point until it can't go any farther and then flip it over and do it on the other side so we'll go ahead and do that now okay. Point that it was, and you didn't necessarily have to take it off and cut it from there. If you wanted to, uh, you could have just made that turn and then came all the way down. But I mean, this is just for the sake of showing you guys. Right there, I hit the zipper, so I'm going to back the needle off, go ahead and cut it off, and then move back to the lower side of the rank.
right there, hit the zipper again, then back the needle off, cut it off. Like I said, you're going to have tons of excess thread that you're going to have to cut off later, so it's completely up to you if you want to, to cut it off after you pre-sew. So. Alright, now we'll go ahead and turn this around, make sure our workspace is clear, <clears throat> and attack from the other side. Okay, what I'm going to do is finish off the bottom and top lines, and then run the seam. Try and keep the rank as flat as possible to ensure that this doesn't, uh, you don't have any kind of binds or anything like that whenever you, you know, start sewing the bottom and the top. Keep it as flat as possible to ensure that that doesn't happen. Okay, instead of uh, picking up and everything like that, I'm just going to turn around. Well, it kind of goes against what I just said, so right, I'll do what I said before. Right, I'll go ahead and pick this up, cut it off, go to the top, finish that off, and then go from there. Like I said, keep the rank flat so that way it doesn't create any sort of issues in the future. We take that off. We have a brand new sewed rank. We just have to clean it up and then we're good to go. Alright, next we'll move on to the name tapes. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the Velcro name tape using the same pairing knife as before. Okay, like I said, running it only between the fabric and the Velcro, ensuring not to damage the fabric underneath. All right. If you're gonna try and cut anything, try and cut the uh, cut the Velcro because you're not gonna end up using it anyways. It is helpful to save just in case the Velcro on the uh, the breast pockets start deteriorating but uh, normally I don't even, I don't even bother those uniforms are usually trash by the time those start to go oh, try and keep it in the camera's view Also in this video, I don't have a U.S. Army name tape, so I'm not going to be able to show you the skill badges, but uh, essentially just do the same exact thing that you would for the rank. Just pre-shape them. Obviously, you don't have a template, but just use the, uh, you know, the actual size of the badge itself as a guide. And then from there, you're able to just stick them on centered over the U.S. Army name tape. So it's... Those are fairly easy, all right. And if you 
if you cut into the fabric like I just did, then it's not the end of the world, but I just like to make sure that I try to keep the fabric as intact as possible. Like I said, I just kind of cut right there, but here you're left with a good left and right edge to where the name tag was, and that's what you're going to use to to measure out your actual name tape, okay? Uh, or, as before, you can use the Velcro as your guide, but typically these things are like bacon and they're really hard to, to deal with, so I just don't even bother. Um, but for the sake of this, I could show you. All right, first I start off just by kind of centering it as best as possible in a fold, all right? The easiest way to see if it's centered is you should know where the center of your name is, especially if you have a five letter name like me, you can just kind of fold it over and then if it meets at that center G, which it does, then that's centered, all right? And it's roughly as long as what we had before, so we can use it. What I like to do with these is similar to uh, pre-sewing the rank, is I just like sewing these two edges so that way it's just a nice flat piece that I'm having to deal with instead of constantly having to refold it and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and bring our sewing machine back forward. Place the uniform off to the side for a second. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-sew just those two edges as I said before. Here you don't have to follow by the half, half inch rule. Just kind of all the way down. Knock that side out. And move to the other side where that fold was. The nice thing about the name tapes and US Army name tapes is they they hold their form a lot better after you fold them because they're not such loose fabric like skill badges or rank. So these are far easier to put on than uh, rank or skill badges. Okay. Now I don't have to worry about uh, having to keep it folded and keep it folded in the right spot. I can just place it on there. I know where my start and end points are on my uniform and I'll just place it on there. So, ensuring that it's not upside down, go ahead and locate where the seam was. Okay, it should be somewhat, yeah, you can see it right there, uh, where that first end seam closer towards the center of the uh, top was. We're gonna go ahead and run that same exact line that I just did on the name tape on that same exact seam, and that's gonna be our start point. I'm gonna run both these uh, long portions, and then we'll finish it off over here. All right, the reason why I like to do that is that way I, I'm making sure that they are uh, level with where the Velcro was before. Uh, I'm a pretty poor judge when it comes to that, but I mean, if you use the tools that are already given to you, then you shouldn't fail, right? Let's put this stuff out of the way. Lower the needle down before you place the foot to ensure that the needle goes right where you want it to in the first place. Okay, one last check to make sure that it's nice and perpendicular with these long lines. And then go ahead and let it rip. Okay, from here, we're gonna do a turn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ensure that the needle is all the way in the down position, lift up on the boot, and turn it. Okay, I know it's kind of difficult to deal with all the excess fabric of the top in the way. Just kind of fold it up and keep it out of the way, so that way it doesn't get caught underneath and you end up sewing extra stuff. Oh, kick the boot down. Okay, from here, <clears throat> keep the flat or keep the top as flat as possible in the area that you're working with. Okay, run that name tape along those lines, those parallel 
long lines that you want to keep along with from the Velcro. Go ahead and drop the boot. Actually, before I do that, we get a little closer to the bottom. So that way there's not such a large, crazy seam. You can manually do this to make sure that you're not messing anything up. But, go ahead and make the turn. The top is flat. Drop the boot again. And go ahead and run the rest of the way. Sometimes you may have extra things like that that are just kind of messing with everything. It's no big deal. Just cut them out of the way. All the way to the end. We'll go ahead and lift the needle all the way out, completely removing the top. Do a quick check, just make sure it looks kind of level. Oh, looks pretty good so far. We'll go ahead and do that top line and then we'll close it off. We'll be done with this, uh, this name tape. Find that top right hand corner of the name tape. Make sure that the excess thread from this boot is running underneath the boot. Lower the needle to find the exact point that you want to start on. Keep the top flat as well as your name tape and just run it through again. Okay, from here, super easy. Just lower the needle all the way, lift the boot, and then we'll close off this end. Go ahead and cut off that excess. Let's take a look at our top. Very clean. Now go ahead and just remove all the excess just like we did with the rank. I didn't exactly show you doing that, but I cleaned up the excess on the rank and uh, now it looks pretty good. All right. As I said before, I don't have a US Army name tape, so I'm not gonna show you that, but you get the gist when it comes to, to replacing name tapes and the rank is good enough to suffice when it comes to showing you how to do skill badges, so I'm not gonna go over that. But if you have any questions, uh, Please feel free to uh, ask me in the comments below or message me, um, and I'll be happy to help with you. Uh, if this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, go ahead and please uh, give it a like, and uh, thank you for watching.